Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and in this video we're going to be continuing our series on writing a Slack bot using the Go programming language. In the last video we worked on converting our Slack bot program into a microservice with a single endpoint. And when we visited that endpoint through the browser, it would invoke a handler function that would send a predefined text message to our, uh, our Slack workspace but we still need to be able to send build specific information so that we can send a message to our Slack channel that includes the same information that it did in the earlier videos, like the build result and the build URL. And to do this, we're gonna modify our endpoints so that it can process JSON payloads and then uh, convert those payloads into the arguments that were previously command line arguments in the earlier iterations of the Slackbot program. If you're enjoying this series, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more series like this. And remember that all the code that we write in this video and the previous videos is available in a GitHub repo that I've linked in the video description below. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab a coffee and let's get started. Okay, so I have the Slackbot program open in my editor. And the first modification that I wanna to do to uh, the program is import a new dependency and this is going to be the uh, encoding JSON library. And this will allow us to start processing uh, JSON that's received through the handler function, the HTTP request that's passed into the handler function send Slack message. So that's gonna be encoding forward slash JSON. And now that we've added that dependency, I want to define a new uh, data structure and we're gonna call it uh, Jenkins build. And uh, this struct is going to hold all of the information uh, that we previously had as command line arguments in earlier iterations of the program. So we're gonna store the URL, uh, the um, build result, the build number, and the Jenkins job name inside of this struct. And it's going to, uh, when, we, when we invoke the JSON library, we're gonna parse out the JSON values into the member variables of this Jenkins build struct. And the first member variable that we're gonna define is the build URL. And it's gonna be of type string. And then we're going to actually assign it a custom JSON tag. So if we don't assign it a custom JSON tag, it'll uh, by default take the member uh, variable name as the as the tag, uh, the JSON tag. Uh, but we'll define a custom JSON tag. We'll keep it simple and make it essentially the same as the member variable itself. But this could be custom. Uh, and this could be different than than the member uh, than the uh, member variable name. It could be something like that. Uh, and you'll see where we use this later on when we start modifying our uh, our Jenkins pipeline script. You'll see how we use these tags uh, in order to uh, send a JSON payload to uh, the send Slack message API endpoint. The next uh, member variable is going to be build result. And build result is also going to be of type string. And we're going to define the tag as simply build result in all lowercase. And then after build result, we'll uh, define build number. And this will be of type int. And the JSON tag will be build number. And finally, we'll define the job name, which is gonna be of type string, and the JSON tag is going to be uh, job name. So now that we have that data structure defined, uh, we'll be able to start modifying our handler function to process JSON data. And if you remember from the previous video, we had commented out um, a lot of code that was processing the command line arguments that we were passing in in previous iterations of the program when it accepted uh, command, line, uh, command line arguments. And we are going to copy that code back into the program now 
uh, because we'll need it uh, after processing the JSON data. We'll we'll process it in a in a way that will allow us to reuse that code that we had in the earlier iterations of the program. And I have the the program pulled up. This is the version of the program on the main branch in the repository. And I'm going to copy everything after the instantiation of the API client. I'm just gonna copy all that. And I'm going to replace uh, everything after the instantiation of the API client uh, with that code. And now that we have that code copied into uh, the program, let's go ahead and instantiate an instance of our Jenkins build data structure. So that's gonna be, uh, we'll just call it uh, build and build equals Jenkins build. And once we have that build, we can begin processing a JSON payload from the HTTP request that's passed into this send uh, Slack message handler function. And to do that, we are going to instantiate a JSON decoder and call the decode function on that uh, JSON decoder uh, instance. So we'll say json.new decoder and pass in the request body. And we'll immediately call uh, the decode function on that decoder and pass in a reference to the build data structure. And what's cool about this decoder is that when it decodes the JSON payload, it's going to automatically fill each of these member variables in, uh, in our build uh, data structure when it's processing the, the JSON payload. It's going to look for the build URL tag and it's gonna fill the build URL uh, member variable of this particular instance of uh, Jenkins build uh, with that uh, with the, its associated value from the payload. And after uh, calling the decode uh, function, we will check uh, for an error. And if error is not equal to nil, we will uh, create a new HTTP error. And uh, bad request. A status code of bad request and then return and uh, this request dot body should be capital B so R dot body now all we have to do is modify the variables that were previously command line arguments uh, down here in the same lot so we can pretty much keep the same logic that we had in the first iteration of the program we just have to modify these command line arguments to use uh, the Jenkins build uh, data structure now and use its uh, member variables. So the build URL is going to be build dot build URL and build result is going to be build dot build result. And then we have build dot build number. And finally we have the uh, job name. And for the build number, uh, we're going to wrap that in format uh, sprint. And there's one thing that I need to do with uh, data structure up here is just remove the space between the value and the colon. Okay. And uh, I think that's pretty much everything we need. We should be able to send a JSON, um, it, we should be able to send like a curl command with a JSON payload to this endpoint when we're running the program and uh, it should send a Slack message. And the last thing that we need to do uh, before we run the program and test this new functionality out is modify the Jenkins pipeline script to use curl instead of invoking the program locally. The program is not going to be running locally on the Jenkins uh, instance anymore, it's going to be running as a server and Jenkins is going to curl our, um, our API endpoint and send a JSON payload that contains all of the, uh, all of the information that we were previously sending in earlier iterations of the program.
So I'm going to navigate to the Jenkins pipeline script and I'm uh, in the post build action section of the pipeline script and we're going to modify the shell command here where we were previously invoking the program directly on the Jenkins instance and passing in uh, Jenkins environment variables to the program. We're going to replace this with a call to the curl utility and uh, we're going to curl our API endpoint with a JSON payload. So let's go ahead and we will delete um, what we have here for, for the shell command. And uh, we're going to invoke curl and then specify uh, in the header the content type. is going to be application uh, forward slash JSON. And we're going to specify the post method. And then we are going to uh, specify the data payload. So this is where we're going to actually pass in uh, our JSON uh, data. So I'm going to say uh, dash dash data and then in single quotes, we're going to uh, specify the build URL. And we're going to escape the quotes around the build URL tag. So this is going to be build URL and then escape those quotes. And remember that these, uh, these tags follow the tags that we define in the data structure. So notice I'm specifying build URL here all lowercase. This is following the format that we defined here. So this is where we're using these JSON tags. Now after escaping uh, the build URL uh, quote, we'll uh, say colon and then uh, we will escape the quotes around the environment variable, the build URL environment variable. And then we'll escape uh, the quote again. Then we'll also, uh, the next uh, argument is going to be build result. So again, we're going to escape the quotes, build result, colon, and then we're going to uh, escape again. And we will uh, invoke the current build result environment variable. The next, uh, the next uh, JSON argument is going to be the build number. And we will put the build number here. Notice that I'm not escaping build number in quotes because this is a, a integer. Uh, it's being processed as an integer uh, argument. And then finally is the job name. And for the job name, we are also going to uh, use our environment variable. Okay, and that ends the JSON, uh, the JSON payload. So after we define the JSON payload, then we're going to specify our um, our URL, uh, the the uh, API endpoint uh, for sending a Slack message. And in my case, I'm going to be using a specific uh, IP address because I'm running my Jenkins instance inside of a Docker container. So local host, I, I can't just say local, local host in this case. So I'm going to specify uh, my local IP. and then send Slack message. OK. 
okay? And that should be uh, all we need for the uh, curl command and should be the only thing that we need to do uh, for our Jenkins pipeline script. We don't need any additional modifications to our Jenkins pipeline script. So now that we've made those modifications to the Jenkins pipeline script, be sure to commit and push those changes up to the repository since uh, our Jenkins uh, pipeline job is pulling the Jenkins file from SCM and not, uh, you know, not, it's not local on the Jenkins, uh, inside of the Jenkins job. Once you've uh, uh, commit and pushed these changes to the uh, Jenkins pipeline script, go ahead and navigate back to our uh, Jenkins job. And for the changes that we made in this video, I actually created a new uh, Jenkins pipeline job. It's essentially the exact same as the previous, uh, the job that we had in, in the previous videos, um, but it's just pulling, um, it's pulling our pipeline script from a different branch in the same repository. Uh, so it's essentially the same otherwise. Now, before I start a build, there is one additional change that I'm going to make to the uh, Jenkins file that I missed, and that is going to be the um, current build. I forgot to put a dollar sign in front of this. Okay, and I'm just going to add and commit the Jenkins file. Okay, and then let's run the program. Okay, and now that we're running the program, we should be able to trigger a build. And I'm gonna go into build 21 here, and let's see if it sent. Okay, so it was uh, successful, and it looks like it sent the uh, message. I get a response back from the program that says, sent Slack message. So let's take a look at our uh, Slack channel. And it looks like it did success, uh, successfully send the message. I get all of the same information that we got in the earlier iterations of the program when the program was running locally on the Jenkins instance. We have the job name, the build number, the build result, and then finally the uh, build URL. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.